Let's use factor by grouping to our advantage, but we're going to develop the factor by grouping visually first because it gives you a deeper understanding. And for those of you who are visual learners, it will aid you in the understanding. Factoring is probably the most important topic in the semester because without that, there are a lot of things you will not be able to do. So we're going to take our time. So it's very important that you take time to understand. And most often when students know how to factor, they will ask if this is important, if this will be on the exams, and the answer is yes. So please pay very careful attention to what algebra tiles are and how we're going to use them. Once we understand factoring with algebra tiles, we'll associate algebraic steps. And then algebra tiles are only used when needed. But in the beginning, it's important to understand how they work. So we're going to use uh, x by x squared to represent 1x squared. So we're going to assume here that until I say so, x is going to be large enough and a positive number so that we can actually say that this green square is area 1x squared units. We will represent 1x or 1 times x as a rectangle, which is x units long and 1 wide. You can represent it vertically or horizontally, but one of the sides is x and the other one is 1. So its area is going to be x square units. The area of the square above it is x squared square units. We will represent 1 square unit by a square, which is 1 by 1. Let's see how we can use these algebra tiles then to talk about trinomials. So for example, if I wanted 5x squared plus 7x plus 2, I have five of those green squares plus seven red rectangles plus two of those purple squares. So let's take a look. So our algebra tiles to represent a polynomial will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That'll be 5x squared, 7x's. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That's 7x's, seven and then plus 2, so that'll be 1, 2. So if you combine all of these pieces together, that total area is represented by the trinomial 5x squared plus 7x plus 2. Does that make sense? So now the question is, treat this like a puzzle and see if you can create a rectangle using all of the pieces. So just like if you've used tangles or some other puzzles where you have pieces and you combine them together, do that and form a rectangle. So pause the video here, see how you could rearrange it. Let's just see how things fit together on the side here so that you can actually put them together in a rectangle, all of them. We'll just take one green piece here. So let's put one green square here. This is x by x. You can see this red rectangle can either go vertically on the side or horizontally on the bottom. So for example, like here and here. Those are the only two places on the left, on the right, up or down, it can go. These one by one squares then can only fit down here if you want to create a rectangle. So if I put two here and one here, I'll need two of those purple ones here. Well, how do you read this in terms of a polynomial? It's all fine and good in terms of the picture, but algebraically, what does it mean? Let's talk. This length from here to here is x. From here to here is 1. From here to here, it's x. And from here to here, 1. And then here, this is 2. So the area of this total rectangle with all the pieces together will be x plus 1 times x plus 2. So this x squared plus 3x plus 2 can suddenly be written as a product of x plus 1 and x plus 2. So you can see how using algebra tiles will be able to factor. And then we'll talk about what is happening algebraically. All right. so. Let's go back to our original problem. Pause the video here. See which way you can combine these pieces together. You can 
either work on algebra tiles online or you can make these pieces yourself or just draw it out. But visually see what you can do. Go ahead, try it on your own. Just remember the vertical rectangles, red ones, can only go like how I showed, either under or to the side. Because the side x needs to match up with the side x of the square. And the side 1 of the little square has to match up with the side 1 of the rectangle, red rectangles. All right, assuming you've come back, there are many different ways you can arrange these into a rectangle. Let's take a look at one of them. So we have 1, 5, x squared, so it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The only way I can make a rectangular piece out of the squares would have to be if they are all horizontal or all vertical. I only have two purple pieces, so I'm going to have to go 1, 2, and then I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's 5 x's and then 1, 2. That makes it a perfect rectangle. So now we can figure out how to read this together and see what is actually happening. So let's talk about how the rectangles are displayed here and the algebra that's connected to it. So we know from here to here it's x, from here to here it's 1, all the way from here to here is x also. So if you go all the way from the left to the end of all the right uh, red horizontal rectangles, there'll be 5 x's because it's 1x, 2x, 3x, 4x, 5 x's and then plus the 2. So the length is 5x plus 2 horizontally and vertically will be x plus 1. So the area of this whole big rectangle would be x plus 1 times 5x plus 2. So let's take a look a little more in depth. We have 5x squared plus 7x plus 2. Those are all the separate pieces. Look what we're doing to it. Horizontally, we have 5x squares, those are the green pieces, and then two vertical uh, red rectangles, that's the two x's. Then on the bottom, we also have 5x's and plus the two squares, one each, so that's two. So if you look now, do you remember how we were doing factor by grouping first two, last two, and pulling out greatest common factor? So in the first two, you're going to have to pull out the x. Next two, there's nothing in common, so that's one greatest common factor. And then final result would be 5x plus 2 times x plus 1. So you can see how factor by grouping, you can see it in the picture, what is actually happening. So we'll worry about how to find these factors 2 and 5 without having these pieces in a little bit. First, let's just make sure that you are able to use algebra tiles and do these problems. All right, pause the video here and see if you can, first of all, get the correct amount of tiles you need and then rearrange them to make a rectangle out of all the pieces. So go ahead and play with it. Pause the video here. Assuming you've come back, it probably looks like this. One, two, three, three x squares. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 x's, and 2 singletons. To make them into a rectangle, let's see what we are able to do. There are many different answers, but the resulting area that they occupy will be the same. So 1, 2, 3, I can go this way. I can also go horizontally or vertically. If I go horizontally like I have, then the red pieces, I'm going to have to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then the two singletons will go right there. All right, let's see how to make sense of it then. Go ahead, pause the video and see if you can write the product. You can see 1, 2, 3, x plus 1, so horizontally that's 3x plus 1, and vertically, that will be x plus 2. All right, let's try another one. Go ahead, try it on your own. 
pause the video here, please. So 1, 2, 2x two squared, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. All right, let's see how we can arrange them then. Well, 2, so 1, 2, you can go vertically or horizontally. And I have 5, so I'll have to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Go ahead, write it product. Write it as a product then, once you have this picture. It will be 1, 2. 2x, two 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this is 2x plus 5, and this is x plus 1. So we'll have 2x plus 5 times x plus 1. All right, try this. Now you might be thinking to yourself, how can we do a subtraction? Subtractions means take away, so take away 3 means take away 1 by 1 squares, 3 of them. So let's uh, give you the tiles first. So 1, 2, 2x two squares, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5x's. I have to remove 3 little squares out of somewhere, either the green or the red. So I'll do the reds. So it'll be 1, 2, 3, remove them. So that's how it would look. So now we have some broken pieces and now we have to put them all together. So sometimes negatives make it a little harder to see. So it is okay if you struggle, but do pause the video here and see what you're able to do. How should we do it? You're going to have to be creative. Go ahead. Pretend I was in your class right now and giving you extra credit for it. Would you work then? Go ahead, see how you put it together. Don't just give up. Remember, we are trying to cultivate growth mindset. This is what will do it for you. All right, so let's see what we got. One, two, one, two. Okay, now we have those three. So I'll go one. So those three we have to put somewhere. So we can't put it just anywhere. So I'm going to put it here. Take the second one and put it here. We still have one more, so I'm going to take that and put it under here. But now what? We have this open gap right here, and we have uh, nothing under here. So maybe we can gouge this out. You can see how this is x and this is 1, since that's what we cut out. So here we go. Take that piece out and put it under here. So look what we got then. We have two x's from here to here, but we took out one. So that will be 2x minus 1. And then here we have 1x and 1, 2, 3. So that's why 2x minus 1 times x plus 3. That's why the x has to be big enough. Otherwise, you might not be able to take the one out. That's why we told you, make sure that you assume that x is large enough. All right, so the algebraic process of combining rectangular pieces and creating one bigger rectangle is called factor by grouping. So let's do other examples here of factor by grouping and see how it works for different types of polynomials. So we'll continue to explore trinomials of degree 2. All right, so let's take a look at how we would visualize 3x squared plus 8x plus 4 geometrically. So let's see if we can put those together. So we have x squared, x squared, x squared. That's 3x squared. We have x times 1. So this one yellow piece here, rectangle here, is 1x. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So we have 8 rectangles of area x. And then we have four little squares of area 1. Okay? So now here's your task. Move these pieces around to see how you're going to form a rectangle out of it. It's not a rectangle right now. So go ahead and do that. Uh, if you have algebra tiles or you can use virtual algebra tiles. We'll do the first one for you. So it's like a jigsaw puzzle and you're putting it together. All right, so let's move the 3x squared over here and see how we can put the remaining 8x. 
clearly we can turn this little piece and fit them up right here or sideways here. Those are the only two places it can go. So let's see. If we put one of them here, then you would have to put one, two, three to make a rectangle. But if you put three, then there'll still be five left and we can't put five here. It won't work. So we'll just put two, two, and two. That will make it six. So if you put six x, so that's the six x, and then the remaining two x, let's put them sideways here. Because if you put them upright here, they're not going to make a rectangle. And now we have this little gap that we can fill in with these red squares. So let's do that. All right, so now we have a perfect rectangle. So we have 3x squared plus 6x, which is these six strips right there, plus the 2x, which is right there, and the 4, which is right here. So those are all the pieces that we've rearranged. So look at how it looked before, and look at how it looks now. So we have taken these pieces, moved them around, so now it's a perfect rectangle, and then see how we can rewrite it. So we have 3x from here to here, and x plus 2 from here to here. Why? Because this is x, 1, 2. So this is x plus 2. This is x plus x plus x, 3x. So this right here, these three greens and these six yellow will make a rectangle together of the length 3x times x plus 2. Let's look at this bottom, the two yellows and the red. From here to here, it's 2. From here to here, it's x. From here to here is 2. So again, it's going to be x plus 2, right, which is what this width is here, times 2. So 2 times x plus 2. All right, now you can see that if you look at this big rectangle, then it's 3x plus 2 times x plus 2, which is this right here. So if you take algebraic tiles, that's what these tiles are called, algebraic tiles. All right, you want to hear a funny story? When I first started doing these problems to help my students and using geometry to help understand algebra, I thought I was inventing something really cool. However, it turns out that algebra tiles have existed for a long time. I did not invent anything new, although I thought I was inventing something new. Other people have used these methods to do factoring for a long time. So... Nothing new, but very useful because it really does under, make you understand how factoring works and how geometry and algebra are connected. All right, so now let's see. What if we didn't have algebra tests? Can we do this same process, you know, algebraically? The answer is yes. So you don't have to keep drawing these algebra tests, but it's good to use it in the beginning. So let's see how we came up with the 6 and 2 split. That's called factor by grouping. So we're using factor by grouping for trinomials, ax squared plus bx plus c kind. So we're using factor by grouping for quadratic um, polynomials here. So let's take a look. We take a look at 3x squared plus 8x plus 4. And my recommendation is that first factor out any uh, greatest common factor they all share. Once you've pulled that out, then look at the remaining terms Take the highest degree term and the lowest degree term and multiply them together. Multiplying them together will give you 12x squared. Now think of two numbers that multiply to give you 12x squared, but add to give you 8x. So clearly, the both terms must have an x in it. And so really, just think of two numbers that multiply to give you 12, but add to give you 8. And so you can see how 6 times 2 is 12. So 6x plus 2x add up to 8x, but multiply to give you 12x squared. And that's how you can split the 8x. So the term 8x can be split as 6x plus 2x. And then first two terms, last two terms, 3x squared plus 6x. You can see 3x is their greatest common factor. So you can rewrite this as 3x times x plus 2. Between 2x plus 4, you can pull out a plus 2, and again, write times x plus 2. And now, 3x plus 2 times x plus 2 is how you would add that. Or you can think of it as x plus 2 is their greatest common factor that you're pulling out.
All right, so this is how the algebraic factor by grouping method works. Many people use trial and error method to factor trinomials. I don't like personally that method because it works very good in certain examples and other examples it may not work and you might get stuck. This is a sure way of factoring. In fact, you know, most of my education took place in India and I never heard of factor by trial and error until I came to United States. So it's important that you learn this method even if you are good at factor by trial and error in case you ever get stuck because this is a sure mathematical way of getting factors if you are stuck. All right, so enough of that. Let's take a look at what virtual algebra ties look like to do the following problem. 2x squared plus 7x plus 6. So I'm going to ask you to pause the video and let's see an example of virtual algebra tiles. If I hatch an x squared, so here's my x squared, or here's my x. Now, it's a little too big here because I want to make sure that 2x squared fits here. So I'm going to take, see the slider, it can make it big or small. So I'm going to make the x squared about that big, just so I can have two of them. All right, so now here's 2x squared. We need 7x's. So here's one of them, which I, if you want to turn it, you just have to go to the side here so it turns it. So here's 7x, so let's get 7x. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, oops, 6, and 7. So you have 7x's, so how do you think we should fit it? Oh, what else do we have? Uh, plus 6. So we need 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay? We have to uh, arrange these so that they form a rectangle. Here is the clue. Once you have a rectangle out of the x squares, then you know these have to go in the corner here. So you have choices. You can go 3 this way and 2 sideways, or you can go 2 and 3 this way any choice you have. So let's try, what if I go this way? If I do that way, then remember this x can only go this way or it can go sideways here. So what do you think? Is that going to work? Well, no, because let's see, if we put this way, then you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then you'll need one more. So eight, you'll need eight. So that's not going to work. What if I go down here? Then I'll have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Oh, that works. So let's do that. Let's try that. So here we have 1. To turn this, we'll go to the side like that and have 2 and 3, 4, and 5, 6, and 7. So there is my 2x squared plus 7x is plus 6. And so now it's a rectangle. So what are the factors here? It's going to be x plus 2 times 2x plus 3. So x plus 2 and 2x plus 3. All right, let's take a look at another example of factor by grouping. Use 6x squared plus 11x plus 4. So we have 6x squared, 11 of these, and 4 of those. Go ahead and try that on your own. Pause the video and try it on your own. See if it works. You can see the impracticality of using tiles when you have so many, right? So we're going to teach you how to do it algebraically using factor by grouping. So take a look. So we have 6x squared. Okay. Now, that's my 6x squared. I have to move these now. So either you can put one, two, three, four, like that. Or you can put one, two, three, like that. So see how we can make it work. Go ahead and play on your own and then come back so you can see if you got it. Assuming you've gotten it right, let's take a look. So I'm going to take eight of them and put them here. And I'm going to take the remaining ones and put those three over here. So I took eight of them here and three of them there. Eight and three is 11. And then the four uh, singleton squares, the little red squares that I have here, I'm going to put those over here. That forms a rectangle. Very nice, doesn't it? So what's the factors going to be then? This is 2x plus 1 
and 1, 2, 3, 3x, 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is 3x plus 4, and this is x plus 1. So that's what it's going to look like. So 3x plus 4 and 2x plus 1, those should be our factors. Take a look algebraically here then. And that will be your answer. So this is doing it with algebra tiles. But if you want to do it without algebra tiles, so then let's see how we should do it. 6x squared plus 11x plus 4. So take the 6x squared times 4, multiply that together. That gives us 24x squared. Think of two numbers that multiply to give you 24x squared and add up to give you 11x. So clearly they're all going to have x's in them. The multiplication is positive, so both numbers have to be positive or both numbers have to be negative. What are all numbers that multiply to give you 24? 1 and 24, 2 and 12. No, that's too big. I'll give you, I'll give you 11. What else? Think of all numbers that multiply to give you 24 and see if you can find a combination that adds up to 11. I'll give you a few moments. Okay, so 8 and 3 is good because 8x plus 3x gives me 11x and 8 times 8x times 3x gives me 24x squared. So we can rewrite this then as 6x squared plus 8x plus 3x plus 4. Between 6x squared and 8x, I can factor out the greatest common factor, which is 2x, and I'm left with 3x plus 4y. 2x times 3x is 6x squared. 2x times 4 is 8x. 1 times 3x is 3x. 1 times 4 is 4. The reason you have to write a 1 here, if you don't write any 1 here, it will be confusing because you won't know what to factor out then. You have 3x plus 4 is the greatest common factors across these two, and then what's left is 2x plus 1. Or you can think of how you have 2x times 3x plus 4 plus 1 times 3x plus 4, which will give you 2x plus 1 times 3x plus 4. So this algebraic technique allows you to skip algebra tiles. All right, let's do a few more. All right, try that. We haven't done with subtraction yet. Subtraction means removing a rectangle out of the little one. So let's take a look. This is 2x squared plus 3x. But now I need minus 2. So what does that mean? I need two, the 1 by 1 squares to be taken out. So let's take them out of here. One from here and one from here. So this represents 2x squared plus 3x. So let's see if we can organize them into a rectangle. So here's my 2x squared. Remember, <clears throat> this can fit sideways here or vertically like this. All right, so let's see what we're going to do next. We say 4x's, so 1, 2, 3. I'm going to take a gouge out of here and put that up there. Okay, but now remember these had holes in them, so I'm going to have to put those holes here. Can you see? So those two holes went there, and this gouge went and sat up there. So what do you think is the answer then? So this is x plus 2, and this is 2x minus 1. Minus 1 because we took this strip out. So 2x. This is x plus 2, and this is minus 1, so that's the 2x minus 1 times x plus 2. So again, you can see how it's much, much harder when you have subtraction here. But let's see. 2x squared times negative 2 would be negative 4x squared. Two numbers multiplying to give you a negative 4x squared, adding to give you a positive 3x. So how are you going to do that? If multiplication is negative, that means one number is positive, one number is negative. So two numbers multiplying to give you four are one and four, two and two. And two and two not going to work, but one and four will work. Four, we want positive 3x. So we want four to be positive. 4x minus 1x is 3x, so I can rewrite it. So this is a, there's a 1x here. Between 2x squared and 4x, I can factor out 2x. So 2x times x is 2x squared. 2x times 2 is 4x. 
negative 1 times x is negative x, negative 1 times positive 2 is negative 2. And then like before, 2x, x plus 2 is minus 1, x plus 2 is our 2x minus 1, x plus 2. That's what we've been doing before for a long time now. OK, so the new step is this, splitting this middle term into two so you can use factor by groupings. The key is to practice, 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 practice. That will make you more perfect every time you practice. Once you get the speed and I woke you up from sleep, you'll be able to do them even when you're groggy. That's how efficient you need to be in order to make sure you're proficient in it, in order to make sure you're masters at it. All right, let's take a look at another example, which turns out to be a perfect square. So look, let's do 4x squared. And let's take the 12x and put 6 of them here and 6 of them here. Then you can see I need 9 of them to have a perfect square. And so that's x plus x, 2x plus 3, 2x plus 3. So you can also do factor by grouping. And there's your answer then. So 2x can be pulled out of the first two terms. A 3 can be pulled out of the next two terms. And then 2x plus 3 is common between those two. And you're left with 2x plus 3. So the factors are 2x plus 3 2x plus times 2x plus 3, which is 2x plus 3 bracket squared. That's what's telling you that it's a perfect square. You can see it here. Can, can you not? All right, algebraically, 4x squared plus 12x plus 9. Multiply 4x squared and 9, so we got 36x squared. Two numbers, multiply to give you 36, add to give you 12. So that would be 6 and 6. So 6x and 6x, and then continue the algebraic process. So that's how you would do it algebraically if you didn't want to draw algebra tiles. So here are the steps to factor trinomials of the type ax squared plus bx plus c, or ax squared plus bxy plus cy squared, using the factor by grouping method. The first thing is to always, no matter what factoring problem you're working with, is to factor out the greatest common factor, and then work with the remaining trinomial. So once you did that, then multiply the highest degree term with the lowest degree term, and then find two numbers that multiply to give you that product, but add to give you the bx. And then factor by grouping to finish it off. 